for joining us. Uh, my name is Carrie. I am the operations coordinator here at the Artisan Center. This is our May version or May night of an artist journey, and we're here with our five residents. We have four in person with us, and then Trisha is joining us from home. So we have all five here, and I want to tell you a little bit about our residency. So we kicked this off last year for the first time as part of our goal to serve entrepreneurs in our community. So um, we started what we are calling a residency program. It's not a traditional residency. We don't have housing. We don't require them to be here on site kind of demonstrating. Um, but we do have a few kind of exchanges. So um, we offer an exhibition that's coming up. We'll talk more about that in a minute. We offer a free class here. We offer some extended open studio time outside of our business hours. We offer some um, features on our website and social media. If we would have had more events this year, they would have been featured at more events. That would have been great. Um, we take photographs of their artwork. We've posted um, some features of each of them on social media. And this year they also got um, access to a um, series of free business classes with us. So as part of their offering. So that kicked off last week on the 13th and we're in the middle of that right now. Um, our residency is open to any artist working in Northeast Wisconsin that can access the facility. So anybody is welcome to apply and we are opening applications for the upcoming year, our fiscal, like our school year. So September to May um, applications will open on July 6th. So if you're interested in signing up or being a resident next year, starting in September, be sure to look for those applications. They'll be right on our website. Um, and we don't expect a ton of our artists. We're not asking for a bunch in return. We ask that they represent us, that they do things like this, um, that they participate in the exhibit coming up at the Art Garage, and that they work and grow as artists. So we're really here to support them. Um, and we are coming up on this, this big exhibit at the Art Garage. It is for the month of June. We were just talking about setup. We'll be setting up June 1st and 2nd. And then the 3rd, we're having a big reception. An actual in-person reception. I'm so excited. It's going to be from uh, 6 to 8 p.m. on the 3rd at the Art Garage. Their address is 1400 Cedar Street. We have the whole front gallery for these five artists. And it'll be up through the end of June. It's going to be really cool. I'm excited to see everything they've made this year. I want to start with introductions. and. We can start almost sitting in alphabetical order. <laughs> um, we're going to start with Karen first over on my on my left on your right. So, Karen, if you would introduce yourself, tell us who you are, kind of what you make, and how you got to be an artist. Good to be here. Um, I started taking ceramics about four years ago here at the Artisan Center. Um, kind of took a class on a whim, found out that I really loved doing it. Um, I love the malleability of the clay and how versatile it is. Uh, recently, I've been doing mostly sculptural work uh, and want to keep doing it. Okay, well, let's just go in order. My name is Leah Norm, and I work in ceramics, and I also enjoy watercolors and collage. Uh, a few years ago, we wanted to introduce my son to more ceramics in his life. He does all kinds of other art and ceramics was the only thing we couldn't offer him. And my friend was selling her kiln and wheel. So we decided to buy it. And I realized I have no idea what to do with this stuff. So four years ago, I took a class here at the Artisan and Business Center and haven't looked back. And um, I love making your household objects and things that you would use in your everyday life. I think it was that long ago. Yeah. Oh my gosh. My name is Daniela Kuzov. I'm a ceramic artist still. <laughs> uh, I create uh, contemporary decorative pieces. Um, just like Karen and Leah, I started almost four years ago. Uh, took a class on a whim. Really, really uh, liked the medium and the community at the Artisan and Business Center. Um, and just never left. I've been pursuing ceramics since then, and I intend to continue to do that. Hello, hello. My name is Tommy Milogic, 
and I am a ceramicist as well. I started probably about 2017, uh, my sophomore year of college, when I first started getting really into the medium. I had tried it a few times in high school, but my advisor was the ceram ceramics professor at UW Green Bay. So he um, helped lean and push me towards that major. Um, so I recently graduated with the major and now I'm doing it here. My favorite things to make are large vessels or functional wear. And I just like the fact that the clay is so versatile, the glaze is magical, and you can make something that is timeless and can be kind of like usable art in a way. And that's what got me. I see a lot of heads nodding. I love that. Trisha, why don't you go next? Hi, I'm Trisha Spice, and um, I think I've been painting as long as I could hold a paintbrush. Um, I kind of took a break from creating my own art when I had kids. And um, long story short, I was hired to do a mural at my kids' elementary school in 2018. And it's like a 3,000 square foot space or something like that in the library. And when I was done with it, I realized that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, so I sort of came out of retirement, so to speak, or decided to step into this um, career and just sort of explore it more. Um, so I do a couple of different things. I do um, oil portraits of animals and humans occasionally. Um, and right now I'm working a lot in what I call my look up series, which are acrylic paintings. They're really heavily textured and I use a lot of metal foil. So really having a good time exploring those, um, both landscapes and seascapes. Awesome. So I came up with a list of questions. I want anybody to hop in with questions if you've got them. And also anybody here or Trisha, if you guys have questions for each other, I'd love to keep this kind of as a, an informal discussion. So. I'm going to start with the question that Tommy had me put at the top of my list tonight. Um, how and when did you choose your current medium? How, like how or what drew you to that medium? Feel free to hop in, whoever wants to go first. I personally like the challenge that um, clay presents. It seems like a very temperamental medium um, and I like to push its boundaries. Um, and I realized that the four years, it was not only, um, I did not only excel in my skills, but also it was a very personal growth as the medium taught me how to handle setbacks and how to push through difficulties and just continue to working. How about the rest of you? What's the question? Oh, how or when did you choose um, I have a, a background in music, actually. And so uh, I'd always enjoyed drawing and, and painting and dabbled in that for years. But it was really as a musician, that's where I had a creative outlet. Um, but just wanted to, to change things up. And so I had a couple of years where I was just really experimenting, trying different things, trying watercolor, and seeing if there was something that I really wanted to to be interested in and dedicate time to. And that's really what I found in ceramics is, yes, this is this is what I want to do. Um, I think the big appeal to me is just the variety. Um, if you can think of it, you can figure out a way to make it in ceramics. So. Mm -hmm. Well, like I said, we you know, decided to get the kiln and the wheel for my son for ceramics. But for me with watercolors, it was kind of out of necessity because I needed something to let my artist out. And during the pandemic, our, there was no school. So our youngest son was at home all the time. And I can't work on ceramics with him being around because you're basically covered in mud. And if he needs something from me, 
I can't help him. So with watercolors, you can stop what you're doing and go help him and get him whatever he needs. So uh, that was for me why I started watercolors. Tom, do you have anything to add or Trisha? Um, besides, besides the push from my professor, uh, my junior year, I made a display of 300 little teacups and mm -hmm. I threw all 300 in like a month. And now, now I throw 100 cups a day. So it doesn't, at the time, it was a huge task. And it taught me a lot about myself. And it was amazing to see the reaction after that project of just how much people could care. And that was really cool to see. And I also have shaky hands because I'm a diabetic. So it's nice to be able to center something and make something so symmetrical and balanced that you'd never know that I can't hold my hand still. So it, it also comes with personal victory as well. Mm -hmm. I love learning more about you guys. This is really cool. I feel like we've known each other for a while, but I, I learn something new every time we chat. Trisha, did you have something to say? Um, I It's funny. I think I like, you know, both oil paints and acrylic paints for the exact opposite reason that Daniela likes ceramics, because it is forgiving. <laughs> because with oil paints, if I don't like it, I just wipe it off. Uh, with acrylics, I'll paint over or add more texture and kind of restart over. Um, I have a lot of appreciation for the ceramics artists. I don't um, I don't possess, and uh, it's really hard for me to control uh, my patience level. So, um, so that's a very basic reason why I like it. But um, I like I like trying to paint a little bit gesturally, um, in addition to um, combining that with some really precise um, fine details. I I don't know. There's some, yeah. There's there's a lot of reasons I like each kind of the paints that I use, which is I think why I use them both. Um, in different paintings so cool let's talk inspiration let's talk about why you make what you make what's what inspires you what brings out that kind of creativity in you don't don't all jump at once <laughs> i always try to push the limits of the material and when i create a piece i'm always looking to um, create a lot of dynamic and motion. Um, and my, I think my biggest inspiration is, in a sense, I would like to create a continuous conversation. At first, it's between me and the piece. And then I would like the piece to continue to um, converse with the viewer. And I, with the, the motion that I'm trying to create in every piece I make, uh, there is also a difference at every side you look at the piece. And I think that will give the viewer a power to, to display the piece the way they wanted to see it. So there is, there is an input from them as well. So it's the art doesn't end with me. It continues to, you know, to, with as many people as my piece reaches out to. Yeah, to piggyback off that, I enjoy ceramics for the reason that I can make something and then someone can make it a part of their everyday routine or their everyday household. And it it's just dirt, but it can hold so much value and so much character. And I also like the way that ceramics, functional wear can be fit to the hand. So I like working with the thought of how the hand works, how the hand moves during which whichever task of that functional wear gets applied to. I can go next. Oh, is that okay? Can I go next? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, okay. Um, so I think one of my biggest inspirations is nature, which is why I have this look up series, but even on a broader scale, when you're considering, you know, the portraits that I do and um, any of the nature scapes that I make, I like to try to freeze in time an experience or a memory or a moment 
and kind of convey the feeling that humans have within those little moments, whether it's outside or on the water, or if it's, you know, I did a recently a, a wedding portrait of a father daughter dance. I mean, I just tried to sort of freeze a moment in time so that um, I can convey a feeling or an emotion that um, is brought within the scene. Oh, well, for me, I, I enjoy the process of creating something. Working on the wheel is very meditative for me and it helps calm me down and really ground me. My personal life is extremely hectic and chaotic. And when I sit down at the wheel, it, everything else disappears. It just goes away. And so for me, it's really therapeutic. For me, the, I, I desire that my art is encouraging to others. I would say if I had to define art, I would say art is communication. And within that, it can be slang, it can be formal, it can be informal, it can be casual, it can be warm, it can be standoffish. That's that's the beauty of the art. But for me, I want I would like my art to be an encouragement to those who see it. So let me hand that back over to me. Okay, I have to tie in business a little bit. So I'm going to start off by asking, um, what are your favorite parts about being an artist and what are your least favorite parts? So uh, I have a feeling I know what they're all going to say, um, but I think we should talk about it. So who wants to go first? Being an accountant before being an artist so that you can stay an artist. That's my Amen least favorite. To that. Yeah, amen to that. Me too. <laughs> My favorite part is seeing the connection that people have with art pieces and how much of a difference you can make as well as like it's only dirt, but you can make someone's day with just <laughs> some well-polished dirt and that it people love the simplest things and that's amazing to me and art is a great way to show that. Um, favorite part is the process when I'm working with clay. Least favorite part, everything else. <laughs> the business <laughs> aspect of the field. Um, this is where I struggle the most. For me, the favorite part is actually working on the art and working through the pieces. My least favorite part is when life gets in the way and I can't get to the wheel or I can't get to the paints and I, I'm finding myself that I miss it so terribly. Uh, I think I like the, the, the ideas coming up with the project and, and being able to combine this idea with that thing and that over, you know, that little thing over there and somehow combining it all and coming up with an idea of a project to to create. I think that's really exciting. Least favorite, um, anything where I have to be on the computer. <laughs> we talk a lot about marketing and websites and pricing your artwork and and all of those very fun topics here. And they're so important to what you do. Like Tommy said, they keep you being an artist. <laughs> Um, but we know that that's not what everybody enjoys doing. So that's why we're kind of doing this residency and kind of having these opportunities and the business classes and such is trying to make it a little bit easier, a little bit more accessible and a little less daunting, if that's possible. Um, so on that note, what is your idea of being a successful artist? What does it mean to you to be successful? What does that look like? Like, what are your goals as an artist? I know that's a tough one. I should have sent these questions out so they had time to prepare. I can go. Awesome. Um, I think the base success that I would consider like a win every day or every time a piece goes home with somebody is if the communicate, if the feeling I'm trying to communicate within the piece is well received and they get it without me having to explain it, um, that is 
that is my definition of like top top success. Okay. Awesome. So defining success on a personal level for me is um, not having to financially dig a hole to be an artist or not having to have it cost me directly so much as what can I bring in and then turn back out so that basically I don't have to, I don't have to put myself in debt to be a starving artist. Um, I'm also a full-time potter. Uh, like that's my nine to five. So I would love to become a master of the medium. I think that would be really cool and a cool title to earn. And, um, putting smiles on people's faces when they connect with pieces. You can see it. They don't just smile with their face. They smile with their eyes. And that's, that's super cool. Successful artists. Special part. And I agree with Trisha about the communication. So if I can create a conversation between me and the viewers of my art, I think this is, this is the, the greatest achievement, or at least curiosity, maybe not complete understanding because um, art is such a subjective field, but curiosity and wanting to know more about it. For me, the financial part, it makes total sense. Um, as long as I sell my pieces and it pays for buying more clay, I'm really happy about that. But uh, as far as being a successful artist, if I'm happy doing it and it brings me happiness, I'm really excited about that. There's finding that inner joy that I need in my life. Um, I guess that's what I would find most successful for me. Success for me, too, is very similar to what's being said is um, I think is thinking of that project and having that in my head and then actually being able to successfully put that out um, in in tangible in a tangible sense that basically that transformation of the the mental image to an image that everybody else can see too that's that's success i got one last thing to add Um, another thing with making just for me personally, I don't know if this also applies to everyone else here, but I just love making. So if I can always make and always have an audience to make, that's, that's cool. That's success to me. I see that nobody said they were trying to make millions off of their artwork. <laughs> I think it's really interesting how everybody, you know, you guys really are here for the art and for the making. And I think that's art in its kind of purest form, right? Is the, the drive to make things and be creative. Um, I thought of a question while we were chatting and you guys seem to really care a lot about how people um, interact with your artwork. So, um, do you prefer direct sales? Do you prefer working directly with your customers? Do you prefer working through galleries? Um, do you have goals for selling? That kind of thing. Um, I know that there was a sale just this past weekend across the street at the art garage where they had a lot of people selling at booths and things like that. So do you have a preference? I, I personally like selling at booths and art fairs it's cool to meet people. It's cool to have people connect and really feel out the tangibility of the artwork. And it's nice to talk to people, especially about stuff that you spent all your blood, sweat, and tears on. Um, but online sales aren't too bad either, um, especially because there's usually some sort of messaging platform that go along with it. So you get to learn about the person and learn about what they're use of the artwork is or how they found you and that's it's a neat conversation it always is um i don't have much experience with art fairs 
but I agree with Tommy that conversation is great. Knowing where your art is going and what is appreciated about it. I'm currently working with Idea Gallery in Egg Harbor, and I find this um, also um, a great experience um, just because, um, you know, galleries in general, if we have to touch the business side of the business aspect of the field, galleries have a very extensive list of clientele. So this is an easy access for an artist to larger pool of people. Um, and um, also, I think a lot of people are just will just go to galleries and browse and uh, mm -hmm. the, just the the fact that you are there might, you know, bring a potential sell. Um, so I, I think from my experience, working with galleries has been very good. I like dealing with people when they buy things from me. It's always interesting to me to see what people are gravitating toward and what makes them excited. You know, I might have a piece that doesn't do much for me, but I come along someone and they see my pieces and they have to have it. So I think that's pretty exciting to me. It, it helps keep me going. Whether it's in person, um, at a fair or at a gallery, that that communication, that, that relationship with the client, I think that's that's really meaningful. That's that's important. It's part of the communication. You know, if art is communication, you got to have that two part, two people to participate in that. So, Trisha, what about you? Yeah, I I, I definitely like a combination of both. I think um, I like Daniela also I'm working with um, a gallery in Egg Harbor. And so that's been really great. And I've seen some success there for sure. Um, having an online shop for me is a little bit intimidating right now. So um, I'm really like Carrie handles these tech problems that we have on here with amazing eloquence. I would not handle that so well. I'm, that's just not me. Um, and I And I really love working directly with the client as well. Um, I do a lot of custom work. I've got one behind me that started. Um, I do a lot of custom, like I said, portraits. Um, not as many of those right now. I'll probably pick up more of those in the fall. But lately, I've been designing a lot of um, the nature scenes um, for customers for a specific space that they have. And that that is very fun for me. That's super rewarding. Okay, we have a question. Good. I was about to say, do we have any questions? It's like you read my mind. <laughs> yeah, oh, this is Jan. So I'm familiar with all of your work, and um, you know, I've watched some of you evolve over the last couple of years. I've been working with the center, and each of you has, you know, some hallmarks. I guess I would call them that distinguishes your work. You know, I've become very accustomed to Trisha's. Um, metallics and her color palette. Um, I'm just wondering how some of those um, characteristics developed for each of you. Daniela, you have the, you know, those very intricate little flowers that, um, and a very elegant um, uh, um, feeling to all of your work is very elegant and your, um, you know, your glazing is very, very, it's just, it's elegant too. It just fits your pieces. And Karen, you, you have probably the most, um, you know, diversity in your, in your um, ceramics, um, but you're also, you also draw and, um, you know, you, you've experimented a lot. I've seen you experiment so much in the last couple of years with colors and form and, um, and Leah, you just amazed me that you just picked up watercolor during the pandemic because you make it look like you've been doing it forever. And I love your sense of whimsy in those pieces and your colors, very vibrant. Um, and Tommy, well, I have several little things from Tommy. I invested in the cups project and I have another form. And I think it's interesting, Tommy, that you, you know, you're really into the functional pieces, but you maybe challenge yourself a little bit um, doing things that are a little more artsy. I'm just curious as to, 
you know, kind of how you're finding or have found your groove. Who wants to go first? Uh, one of my goals for the last the last couple of years, when I started and then really decided, I was about six months in, and I decided this is what I want to do. I'm going to focus on that. One of my goals was really to become skillful. Not that I've arrived, but to to develop as broad a skill base as I can in ceramics because there's very there's several making processes you can use. And I wanted to be able to use any of those well, so that when I had an idea of something to create, I was not limited by my skill set to to do that. So that's Jan. That's why you you see that I've I've done all these different things. Well, part of that is just that experimentation of of, of processes and ideas and seeing what works and what do I like and what colors and what shapes and, and ways of, of building, that's that's where that's all come from, is that desire to to build the skills. And I feel like these last this last year basically it's really kind of focused in really putting aside the functional stuff. I, I love doing the functional stuff, love making teapots, but for right now the focus is is a couple of, of series that I'm working on and that's the focus, the sculptural focus right now. It's killing me to not like interject and have a conversation with that microphone across the room. I love that your your drive is kind of that mastering of the skills. You know, that I think that that's really interesting to know about you. And I appreciate you sharing that with all of us. For me, I make things that make me happy. <laughs> and if I'm happy and I create something out of it, I I think that's a win. So for me, it really is just a personal connection with the piece. Um, for me, is I make things that challenge me. Why not have a vase with 4,000 tiny, tiny flowers in it, right? <laughs> Who doesn't well need that? <laughs> and yes, I did count them. Um, I, I really like the challenge. I like the challenge and I like to make um, very uh, detailed pieces. Um, so I, I think this is what I enjoy. Um, and I, you know, I draw inspiration from a few ceramic artists that I, I follow their work. And sometimes, um, you know, I just see something that I've done and I really like it and I turn it mine. I just put my input on the piece using some of their elements. Um, so yeah, this is, this is how I go. The harder, the better. <laughs> Jan's kind of talking about how your guys' artwork looks, and when I see what you've created, I, I see you guys in it. You know what I mean? Like, I have that, like, oh, I can see Daniela in this, or I really see Karen in this project. Those kind of things really come through me. I can, I can see almost your personality in your artwork. Do you guys feel that way? Do you see it as kind of a, like a self-portrait when you make things? I do. I think I think it's it's very hard to to create art that is not you. And I think it's just kind of a form of expression. So, yes. So, um, yeah, I do see myself, definitely. Um, I used to draw a lot as a kid. And one thing that I would always remark on is how people could draw the same drawing, especially when you're a kid in art class and everyone does the same thing in elementary art. But everyone draws it with a different line, a different pressure, a different thickness, at a different time and in a different place. And that that mark making and that quality that sticks with you in the way that you make a mark um, has always been cool to me. So I like to bring a balance of that machine and symmetry side from the wheel working and how precise you can get it. But I also like working and showing my hands and my, my throw lines and what I initially saw when I made it. I like leaving a little hint of that in. Um, and I took a photography class. Or no, um, I think it was a quote from Simon Leach, who was a famous production potter. Um, but 
he compared throwing a piece to taking a picture because you can just snap a photo and then spend six hours in post making it nice or you can spend six hours before you take that photo make it nice and then you have a nice photo and that always stuck out to me that you can you know you can put every bit of clay that you want where you want it right away and the more you can do that the less you have to do later on and that always is cool to me Trisha, do you want to chime in at all sure um so you know as far as color palette and um you know themes and things i think that i try really really hard to do everything in my life with love um and intention i'm human but that that is my goal in life um and i never feel more restored more loved myself than when i'm out in the natural world around me when i'm out in god's creation and so i think that's that's where these works come from that's why you'll see a lot of warm tones you won't see a lot of cool tones because to me you know love is light and warmth and um so bright that you know metal foil is what kind of i use to interpret or to um, communicate that um and the same thing rings true with the commissioned figurative work that i do because you know as i said i'm trying to create you know or freeze in time a moment for somebody um with love and intention and so i think that's at the heart of it and as far as how i got to these color palettes i think just ex like karen was saying experimentation and time and really like studying and trying to figure out like is this communicating what i want it to um but a lot of it it just it's funny how when you continue to create an experiment, I can squeeze out a paint and mix it and just know instantly it's the wrong color or instantly the right color. Um, and then, you know, depending on what I'm working on, I will throw three or four or five or six different glazes over the top of that to really help it illuminate. Um, I don't know if I'm going sideways on that topic, but it kind of ties into what Carrie was saying is it it is it is about me too it's not just about what i'm trying to communicate it is a little bit of a self-portrait because like i said i never feel more restored and more loved than i do when i'm out in nature so okay we are coming up on about 10 minutes left so if anybody else has any questions who's watching from home or do you guys have any questions for each other is there something you want to know more about how somebody does something or what their inspiration is. Or do you have questions for each other? Is there anything else you want to know? Trisha, how did you come mm. to use the, the foil? The foil and the metal work, metal paint? Um, I ordered the supplies for it. I don't remember where or how I came up with the idea. I honestly don't remember. I just remember thinking, I can't get this bright enough. I don't know if bright is the right word. I can't get this reflective enough in the paint that I, I was using metallic paints. And I just couldn't get the light to communicate what I was wanting to communicate. And so I ordered some supplies for metal foil and just started playing and fell in love with it. I mean, I, I don't really know how else to explain it, but that's kind of, I just kept playing. Well, I don't have any other questions on my list. The last thing I did write was if any of you guys have any um, tips or tricks or words of wisdom to share with any artists who are just starting out. Is there anything that um, you do you have like a motto or is there something you kind of live by that you want to pass on and share with people? We should have sat closer to each other. I know. Yeah. Um, while while it is the goal of an artist to kind of have a, a cohesive body of work. That sounds very, very artsy, you know. I think it's really, really important that you take time to play without an expectation that I'm going to create this and I'm going, you know, because when you have the expectation, you're always already putting pressure on yourself of that you need to do this. Whereas if you're just playing, you're just goofing off, you don't care what the outcome is. And so you're more likely to do something 
I mean, so many times that's happened where I've, I've been playing and experimenting and that's, oh, I tweak it and I actually use it in my work. And I never would have discovered it if I hadn't allowed myself to have the time to play. So work, yes, be good and do the things you have to do, but take time to play. I think my biggest piece of advice for anyone in whatever medium is to do what makes your heart happy. No one wants a grumpy artist. <laughs> and, and your work is going to show through so much more if you're happy doing it. And it, your heart is really going to be into it. Um, I agree with Karen and Leah. Um, have fun, um, but also set some um, goals for yourself if this is the field that you want to um, exceed in. So um, have fun, but also work hard. Always stay curious. Always look for opportunities to learn. And be aware of what you are putting out in the world and what you're communicating through your actions. Because art has the ability to communicate to anyone that can see it, touch it, feel it. And that's going to reach much farther than just an individual human. So be aware of your actions if you're going to be an artist. But have fun. Have tons of fun. Because if you're not having fun, you're not going to be aware. Trisha, do you have any final thoughts? I think be patient, be patient with yourself and loving to yourself. Be as loving to yourself as you would be to your fellow artist or, or as your kids. If you look at, if you're a parent and you look at your kids art or your friends art. Um, I was supposed to go to art school after high school and I didn't. And it's, you know, 20 years later and I'm finally pursuing an art career. Be patient, it, no matter what, just keep, like everybody else on the panel said, keep having fun, play, I, that's the word I used when I talked when Karen asked me about metal foil. Play. Just have fun with it. And something will connect at some point, and then you'll love it, and everybody else will. I think those are beautiful words to end on. So thank you all for being here. Thanks for participating and putting up with our technology issues. This room will be a smart classroom in the next few months. I'm really looking forward to it. So bear with us. We'll have our technology game on point by the next artist journey um, and please come out and see these guys we're going to be at the art garage for the month of june the opening is june 3rd from 6 to 8 p.m and we're going to be there in person i'm so excited to see everybody so have a great night thank you very much